would now love to call up Simone Cranston Rose. <laughs> But just in case you don't know the story of her early activism days, uh, when she was 16 while attending Fresno High School, she took her first steps into activism by leading a massive walkout protest, or, uh, pro protesting harsh immigration laws oh. being introduced on the national scale. And even at that young age, she learned to stand up when it wasn't the easy thing to do. Uh, she was awarded at that time and has continued to receive awards and acknowledgments for her incredible activism. She currently is employed by SEIU 521 as a political community organizer and is serving as the president of the Central Valley Progressive PAC. Woo! Woo! She has received national recognition for her work by the Berger Foundation in 2015 and was again recognized by the Fresno Center for Nonviolence along with the Fresno County Democratic Women's Club, who awarded her as a Democratic Woman Trailblazer in 2016. Her focus is to build power for working families in Central Valley and create a better world for her son to live in. And uh, everybody probably knows this, but just in case you don't, she loves Fresno so much that she named her son Fresno. <laughs> um, I would like to start by thanking everyone who has helped me get to this place and shaped me to be a caring and compassionate person. Um, first of all, many of you probably know my mother, Pam Whalen. <laughs> who actually was a speaker last year at this event. Um, I've yet, got to watch her my whole life, uh, be a strong organizer and um, defend people even when it wasn't the right thing to do. My father, Mike Rhodes, um, who has never given up on his vision of making the world a better place. Uh, to my sister, who unfortunately couldn't be here tonight, Vanessa Rhodes, uh, whose organizing skills and strong work ethic uh, is always impressive and intimidating to look up to. I'd like to thank my husband, Josh. Um, he has offered unwavering support even when I plan a meeting on our anniversary. <laughs> and uh, to my son, Fresno, um, mentioned earlier, who uh, gives me the courage to fight every day to make this world a better place so that he can live in a better world. Of course, I'd like to thank my community and coworkers from SEIU 521. <laughs> who have showed up to phone banks and canvases, even when there's probably more exciting things happening. <laughs> and to my colleagues from the Progressive PAC, who keep fighting to get local progressives elected. <laughs> and I couldn't move any of this work um, if it wasn't for all these people, mostly everyone here in this room. Um, I consider my accomplishments all of our accomplishments. I've always seen myself as a behind the scenes type of person. Um, I've never had desire to run for office or to be in front of the pack. And uh, my goal has always been to make sure that when people are running for office that we have institutions and systems in place so that uh, they will be supported. I know more women should run for office um, and we know that the other side has a lot of money and a lot of structure in place when their candidates want to run. So my ultimate vision is that we have that same thing for our women, people of color, um, and other marginalized folks when they want to run for office. Um, let me share a story real quick um, about building growth um, and building structures of power um, that will help people and people's voices be heard in the community. And in fact, um, one of the women being honored tonight is a part of this story. Um, last year, during the summer, our union, SEIU 521, was leading a contract fight with Fresno Unified School District. Um, and 
They are one of the largest employers in this city. And while working on this campaign, we found out that while the teachers and students um, were out on vacation, the custodians were doing uh, deep cleaning of the classrooms. While the custodians were doing this work, management told them uh, that they refused to turn on the AC while just custodians worked. This meant that at over 70 schools across the city of Fresno, there were custodians working in inhumane working conditions. Can you imagine working inside a classroom when it's 110 degrees outside, how hot it would be in that classroom? Since labor, teachers, classified employees, and community groups have all worked hard together over the last decade to elect labor and community-friendly candidates to the Fresno Unified Board of Trustees, we were able to access the trustees and set up meetings and talk with them. After years of the custodians being de denied AC during this hot summer months, uh, once we spoke with the trustees about these conditions, Within two days, the trustees had made it so that the AC was turned on for our <laughs> If it were not for this hard work that we have done together through labor and community organizing, and if it were not for wonderful candidates like President Trustee Penaveva Islas and other candidates on the board like Keisha Thomas, Elizabeth Rojas, Andy Levine, uh, Valerie Davis, who's in the room today, um, and Susan Whitra, we would not be able to make these changes for workers um, and whose voices are rarely heard. Right. Having people in positions of power uh, that are labor friendly and represent a larger aspect of the community um, allows people to have a voice. And I'm proud to fight for social and economic justice in the Central Valley. And I have, I'm happy to have all you amazing people at my side, and together we can make Fresno a better place for everyone. Wow. Thank you.